Hello, Harry. Mike Kai here uh, from Cleveland, Ohio. Just a little video for you or anybody else uh, who is considering using one of these aviation products, uh, home-built tailwheel assemblies. Great little units, but I had some issues uh, with them 20 years ago when I first bought this. And I'll show you the old tailwheel uh, that's been flying for 20 years versus the new tailwheel. Um, I think a lot of RV guys and other people are using these with great success. I don't know why I had an issue with it, but I made a modification to my tailwheel um, early on to make it steerable only and not full swivel, and I'll show you why. Um, I almost, almost lost the airplane years ago landing because the tailwheel came out of steerable into full swivel. So normally, you know, you pull on this on the uh, push on the rudder pedals and she'll go left and right. Well, that's great, except uh, it'll go into full swivel mode if you pull too hard or jerk it, and or if you get to the limits. So I'll show you uh, how that works here. So this is your normal tailwheel. There's steerable mode, but once you get past a certain point, you go into. Watch, I won't. I won't be able to make it happen now. Full swivel, there we go, full swivel. Okay, and it's got a pretty good detent there. Ah, it's out of its out of its element here. But anyway, here's here's how it works. So uh, take the nut off, washer, and all this. So this this jewel, I don't know how I'm gonna do this with one hand. I'm not very not very good at this. So down here you see there's a little spring-loaded pin right here. So when you pull on the rudder pedals, your steering cables, it's, this is engaged, sorry, right there. But if you go too far, there's a little cam mechanism where it will actually throw it out into full swivel. So I didn't want that. Uh, that nearly caused me to go off the runway. Here's what it looks like. So, go so far, so far, and then boom, full swivel. So what I did is, in my old tailwheel setup, same kind of a deal. Um, I made it so it never comes out of full swivel. So if you pull this off, you see how I, I used a Dremel tool and I reamed out that area so that that detent never gets pushed in. That whole cam area, that does not get pushed in at all, no matter how far I travel left or right. Uh, because I just didn't want this coming out and going into full swivel. So I modified this to be steerable only and I'm thrilled with it. Uh, it's worked great. Um, so this one, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna modify this uh, so that it has, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna ream out both sides of this so that it is in fact uh, steerable only and it will never go into full swivel because when it goes into full swivel, and you're slow and you don't have much rudder authority, you're going off into the toolies, and I did not like that. So uh, maybe this is just, you know, because of the, ge the geometry of my steering cable setup. I'm not really sure, but that's just a, a, bit of, a bit of caution that it may happen in your setup. Of course, taxi tests and some hard, hard uh, you know, pushes on your rudder will tell you whether or not this thing will come out or not. Um, I did have an incident last fall when I was coming back from Wisconsin, uh, Broadhead. I landed at uh, Henry County in um, Western Ohio and I pushed on the rudder pedal pretty pretty hard and it popped into full swivel. So what I had to do is dance back and forth on the rudder pedal so that it recentered that, that spring-loaded uh, pin and I regained control of the tailwheel and everything was fine, but kind of scary. So uh, that is it. Hope that helps.